PS3 Row crossover has been a hot seller ever since it came out a couple of years ago. I'm at the 2022 New York International Auto Show, and this is the 2023 Kia Telluride X Pro. Let's take a first look. So the Kia Telluride has been so successful for the company that they've actually internally named this car the Telluride. At least that's what the Kia PR rep has always told me. And I have to say for 2023, they've made this car even more premium looking. And just looking at the design of the car, you can, you can instantly distinguish it as a Telluride. It's got that bold front end. The Kia Tiger Nose Grille has been updated. It's been enlarged. You have that new Kia logo. You have this new kind of texture. Uh, piano black trim in the actual grille. A lot of these vents are gonna be functional to allow cooling for the engine. And you can see the headlights. All Tellurides now come standard with full LED headlights. This model here, the X-Pro, has a slightly more unique headlight. You can see, unlike the preview fresh model, which had kind of like a square amber or white daytime running light, now they've cut and got rid of that. You can see this is now the daytime running light along with the LED turn signal. The LED low and high beams are, are above it. And then you have LED fog lights down here. That's kind of a big difference between the Palisade and the Telluride because remember, the two vehicles share the same structure. The Telluride has fog lights and it has a more kind of blockier, uh, more squared off, like kind of Range Rover shape to it. Now this particular one here that I'm showing you is the X-Pro model. It's a new off-road oriented trim, uh, which is new. We never used to get that before on a Telluride, but let me know what you think about the styling before, because this is a really interesting looking vehicle. It always has been, and Kia, I think, has personally made it better. Now underneath the hood, I wish there were more changes to talk about. However, we still have the same 3.8 liter direct injection V6, naturally aspirated, making around 291 horsepower, eight speed automatic. It's available with all wheel drive or front wheel drive is going to be the base version. Now looking at the rest of the side profile, you can see this beautiful new blue color really stands out. I like the fact that Kia is now offering a really nice blue on the Telluride. Before they only offered like a dark blue. And you can see the rest of the elements here. There's also an X-Line model. The X-Line kind of takes it below the X-Pro. The X-Pro includes some things like the all-terrain tires, but a lot of the chrome has kind of been blacked out. The roof rails you can see are blacked out. The window trim is blacked out. The wheels, these are an 18 inch black finish wheel wrapped in these Continental Terrain Contact All-Terrain Tires. I wasn't expecting something like this, but you can see with the 18-inch wheel, the larger sidewalls this is going to give the Telluride some better off-road capability. Kia also says that the X-Line and the X-Pro had its suspension raised up by nearly a half an inch. So we have probably just over eight inches of ground clearance, which isn't a lot, but remember, this is still a three-row family-style vehicle, and it certainly helps to give the Telluride, the refreshed one, a slightly more aggressive look. Now, the rest of the profile you can see hasn't changed. This is a a, uh, refresh. It's a very heavy refresh. Uh, this has been a really great seller for Kia since it came out. And then looking at the rear, you can see the taillights have been updated. So unlike the Palisade, you can see the full LED taillights have a slightly different look to them, uh, a slightly darker tint to them. You can see Telluride is still spelled out at the back. There's also this X-Pro badge over here to let everybody know that you have uh, the more off-road oriented model. And then down here, you can see the rear bumper diffuser has been slightly updated. The exhaust trim hasn't changed. You can see this tester here has a tow package because I do want to mention that Kia has increased the towing capacity by about 500 pounds. So this one here now maxes out at around 5,500 pounds for max towing. Now, looking at the cargo area, uh, just like the Palisade, there, there is a ton of space back here. Uh, when you have all the seats up, you can see there's just under 19 cubic feet of space, which is one of the largest in the segment. There's also here an underfloor storage area where you can actually put several things where you could hide underneath here. But unlike the Palisade, however, the Palisade offers the ability to kind of power fold these seats down. You can see in the Telluride, they don't offer the power fold option. Instead, it's gonna be a manual fold. But when you have these seats down, you have just under 40 cubic feet of space. Fold that down and it expands it out to just over 80 cubic feet of space. So there's a reason why everybody in America, a lot of families in America want this vehicle. And the large interior is definitely one of the reasons for it. So Kia did a great job on the exterior of the 2023 model, but they also really stepped up their game on the inside, especially when you talk about the premium ambience. Now, first of all, this X-Pro model getting in, the door has a nice solid sounding thunk, and I'm greeted immediately by this new infotainment system or this new instrument panel. You can see it's got that curved full uh, display here. You've got a 12 inch monitor here, a 12 inch monitor here. This is Kia's latest infotainment system. It kind of stretches and forms a 24 inch display. These are two separate screens. This is what we've seen, of course, on vehicles like the new Kia EV6. Um, the Sorento has this as well. I think it's a really nice addition. It makes the cabin feel a lot more premium. The rest of the dash hasn't really changed. You have a soft touch injection 
protection molded plastic, same of that are similar uh, wood look features that you have from the preview fresh model. You have an aluminum accented door handles. The window controls also feel really high quality and tactile. You have two person memory. Uh, and regarding the seats, actually, I want to show you guys the X Pro seats. You can see there's diamond quilted leather. They have a little bit more aggressively bolstered seats. They are heated and ventilated. However, unlike the Palisade, Kia does not offer the massaging driver's seat. So that's another reason why you want to go for the Hyundai. I do think that the dash here has this really nice um, material here with the faux stitching, more of this wood, which looks real. You touch it, however, you can feel that it's a fake wood, but everything else here hasn't really changed. You didn't need to. You have hard buttons here, volume knob, tuning knob, tri-zone climate control. You have heated and cooled seats. The steering wheel, you can see it tilts and telescopes. It's also a new steering wheel, slightly updated in its design where you have the new Kia logo. Uh, it feels really good in your hands. And then down here, you can see lots of storage, traditional shifter for the eight-speed automatic, your drive mode selector. This area here didn't really change. It didn't really need to, but let me go ahead and hop inside the back seat and show you guys what that's like. This model here has the captain's chairs, which you can see, you can slide the seats forward and back. It gives you a ton of space. However, unlike the Palisade, you don't have those new headrests, which kind of like crimp up to form a pillow, which is a nice kind of luxury touch. But getting inside here, you can see the back seat has so much room. I mean, uh, you can basically be a full-size adult and have so much space back here. The roof has this panoramic glass roof area where it's not like a full glass panel, but you can see this will open up and let in some more light. The one over the, the sunroof over the front one, the front seats actually is what opens. You have these manual sunshades, you have these vents in the ceiling, uh, and of course the USB outlets. Just like the Palisade, Kia has upgraded the USBs where you have uh, USB-Cs now in the back, you have a USB-C in the front. They all charge a lot faster, of course. You have cup holders, another power outlet, storage outlets over here. You have a nice little adjustable armrest here that lets uh, you kind of get comfortable back here. And then when you hop into the third row, the Telluride also allows for space back here for adults. And that's one of the reasons why people want to buy these things. You can see because the, t the car is so wide, you can easily fit three people across. There's probably around 36 or 35 inches of legroom back here. It's really good, honestly. And because it's so wide, you could fit three people like my size to sit back here. It's not too bad. The floor uh, is pretty low, although my knees are a little bit higher up. But unlike the Palisade, there are no heated third row seats. But you do have USB-C charging ports. You have cup holders back here. There's a nice view. There's LED lighting. So overall, this is still one of the top vehicles out there if you actually need to carry six, maybe even seven people. So over the last couple of years since the Telluride came out, the company has literally sold every one that they can build. Dealers can't get enough of these, and it's definitely reflected in the transaction prices. This car has always been in high demand. People have constantly paid sticker or above for the vehicle. And while I don't have final pricing yet of the refresh model, I only think the problem is going to get worse. This car has all the right changes. I think it looks great. I like the off-road um, additions that they added for the X-Pro model. I think the interior is a winner. It looks a lot better. I am slightly sad that the Palisade offers a few more luxury touches, but it's just a reason why you want to go for the Hyundai. This is going to be the more rugged, boxier option. But the new Telluride will be going on sale later this summer, and Kia will announce pricing as we get closer to the on-sale date. I suspect I suspect it's not, going to, it's not going to fray too far from the current model, which is in the mid $30,000 range, going all the way up to fifty dollars So this X-Pro model, I suspect, will probably carry a $50,000 price tag before you factor in any of those dealer markups. But with all that said, I hope you guys have enjoyed my first look video for Redline Reviews here at the 2022 New York International Auto Show. I'm Sophie Bay.